now, the Pogo Man. From the mind of Delusion, 4 9 2010. I'm telling you, diary, it never ends. I went for my morning coffee today, like usual, but decided to take a different route so I could drive by that new trampoline store. And you'll never guess what I saw three kindergartners doing on school grounds. They were jump roping! Well, I was so shocked I almost forgot to swerve and run the little bastards over. <laughs> Diary, I'm telling you, the heathens are multiplying like Catholic rabbits. I blame the media. Boy, I'd sure like to find the assholes who wrote that jump around song. Rip out their tongues with pliers and force them down their throats for singing such blasphemy. Oh yeah, get this. Have you ever heard of a contraption called a pogo stick? They're spring-loaded poles with bars for your hands and feet that assist in bouncing you higher than normal. Talk about an apocalypse bringer. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> click, pop! Click, pop! That sound always, even in his sleep, the only thing echoing in his primitive dreams, that noise wakes him, as it does every single day, ushering him into his thoughtless sobriety. I'm the fucking pogo man. This is all I know. He eats pogo oats after a brisk routine of pogo urinating and a pogo shower. His small but well-furnished house has no roof. Roofs are an enemy of sorts, a physical limitation that taunts the will of the pogo. The will of the pogo will not accept bullshit from anyone. Once the sun has risen over the highlighted meadows neighborhood, he is out the front door. Models now on sale starting in the upper one. From the mind of Delushen, 4-10-2010. Diary, it happened again. Another person tried to escape my Grand Appreciation Re-Education Center. I don't know how she fit through my basement window, but I had to chase her four blocks before the boomerang took her down. Can't these people understand I'm trying to save them? On top of breaking a perfectly good boomerang over the bitch's head, I scuffed up my pillow shoes beyond repair. You know how hard it is to get stains out of them. Still, it's the safest way to get around. Those heathens over at Nike rejected my fifth proposal to stop production on all their shoes and make only pillow shoes going forward. Same bullshit. Our shoes are comfortable the way they are. Fuck them. My sixth proposal's gonna include a bomb. I know I'm so angry. I have to move again. It means eradicating any of my basement students I'm unable to save in time. Those damned authorities, they're always trying to stop me from saving our fragile planet. I'm telling you, diary, they'll never stop me. Another day, the resounding mechanisms of the pogo man's stick mesh with his flesh. There is no telling the two apart. Down the pristine sidewalks of highlighted meadows, he ignores all passers-by. The pogo does not have time to address the curious. It must carry out its mission with the utmost focus. The pogo man passes parks and rows after rows of near-identical houses arranged in Byzantine coils. Every day he flushes out new routes through the suburban maze. No two days are the same. If he had any semblance of independent thought, he might suspect the pogo wanted him to pogo over every square of concrete germinating the pavement, perhaps, but he was not privy to such complex ideas. But alas, yes, uh, but this day he saw something that caused him to snap to a level of awareness he had not, he had never experienced before. Today, he saw a girl. Her butter-soft skin shimmers above the dead grass park. He is not watching where he is pogoing. The pogo stick can sense his distraction. The pogo is pissed. It dishes out punishment by locking the spring on the fall. Pogo Man's chin slams onto the handlebars, and he falls flat on his back, not able to eject himself from the pogo stick. His stride has never been broken before, and it takes him several minutes to feebly and awkwardly get upright again. He cannot see the young woman walking her dog in the park stare at him. She looks confused, and more than a little scared. A rattling, cheaply made sedan drives by. The driver is wearing a baseball cap backwards. He throws a 32-ounce soft drink at the Pogo Man as he passes and yells, Fag, tar! <laughs> the Pogo Man does not notice this either. He can only think of his failure. The Pogo Stick hisses in his mind, shooting needles of disapproval down his spine. I'm the Pogo Man. This is all I know, the Pogo Man says submissively. From the mind of delusion, 4-11. 2010. 
I always knew I had a calling in life. That I was sent here to save mankind from the jumpers, hoppers, bouncers, and general up and downers that threatened to destroy our hollow earth. Huh. Now it's been proven. He's my new neighbor diary. They call him the Pogo Man. What scares me even more than the Pogo Man is his Pogo Stick. There could be more of these demons out there. The call has never rang so loud. Tomorrow, I answer it. Highlighted meadows, your savior has arrived. At night, images of the woman penetrate the Pogo Man's dark, vacuous slumber. He sees her face through the barrage of the Pogo's clicking. He is aware of emotions he has never felt before, motivated by things he didn't know existed. At the back of these thoughts, though, he can hear the Pogo grumbling jealously. The next day, he's over the door and pounding his way through highlighted meadows. There is an awkward silence between the Pogo stick and the Pogo man. In that silence, wedged between the pops, is a resentment on both ends. The Pogo thinks, I don't need you, bag of flesh. The Pogo man thinks, I don't need you, Pogo stick, you're holding me back. He makes his way back to the park from a different street. The, the woman is there again. She has, a, she has soft blonde hair and soft white skin and a little snowy peak of a nose. The Pogo Man is, becomes overwhelmed with strange new feelings emanating from his lower parts. The Pogo is instantly aware of this and jolts him with a powerful volt of Pogo voodoo. The Pogo Man is unfazed. He must meet this woman. He will stop at nothing now. The Pogo, for the first time in its existence, feels a sense of impending doom. The Pogo Man veers off the sidewalk, pogoing hard into the packed dirt. The woman can see him coming. She looks very concerned. She tugs at the dog's leash, trying to get the dog to hurry up about its business, which at the present appears to be sniffing another dog's feet. <laughs> to the Pogo Man, her sky blue tracksuit is an angelic wave of hope and beauty. He stops a few, in a few inches from her face, his brain pumping desperately to find the words to express himself, something he has never had to do before. I, like you, want to touch face? <laughs> he pulls his hands from the handlebars of the Pogo. Pogo stick. Sticky resin seeps from the handles, pulling his hands back to them. You are the Pogo man! Pogo or die! The Pogo stick screams into his mind. The woman is frozen in terror. She does not know what the hell to do. Her dog is whimpering behind her, tail far between his legs. Must break free, the Pogo man says. He strains harder and harder, but the will of the Pogo is also equally strong. Finally, the Pogo Man gets one hand free. He extends it triumphantly to the woman's face and strokes her soft skin. She does not recoil. Tears roll down her face. Who? Who are you? She says. He thinks for a second. He does not know if he has a real name. All he has known is Pogo. He decides to call himself Dave. Before he can tell her this, the Pogo lashes back, shooting him and the Pogo stick to the ground. You cannot have her! You can have nothing! The Pogo screams. Now, for the first time, the pogo stick takes complete control of his body. It thrusts Dave to his feet. You want to touch her, it says demonically? Then touch her! The pogo launches him onto the woman. She hits the ground hard, even after collapsing onto the terrier, crushing it. She screams and flails pathetically as bounce after bounce squish her insides. Dave cries. He's helpless. How did you like that? How did you like that pogo fucking? The pogo stick asks Dave. Dave only whimpers in defeat. Now will you disobey me? No. And why is that? Because I'm the pogo man. From the mind of Delu Shen, 4-12-2010. Oh, what a joyous day. The hollow earth can rest a little safer today. Hogo Man is no more. It wasn't easy taking out the son of a bitch. The guy rides his pogo stick literally everywhere. Sniping him was out of the question. <laughs> I tried running him over, but he just bounced over my car. I finally got my chance this morning. I found him walking around his house, dragging his feet and lamenting over some girl he was with yesterday. I got a hold of his pogo stick and connected the spring to a perpetual motion device. <laughs> He's gone for good, diary. And yet, I can't help but feel saddened by this. I may never find an adversary as great as he was. I feel I should honor his death. Don't tell anyone, but tonight I'm going to bounce on his pogo stick. Just once for him. And now, the news. Well, if a day like today doesn't make you want to strangle puppies in the name of Satan, I don't know what would, Eric. Surely. 
Right you are, JW. It was discovered today that the Earth is ho is indeed hollow. And, and, and after a man identified only as Mr. Shin took a turn on a pogo stick and split the planet wide open. The crack zigzags through three states currently and is continuing to grow. Until the problem can, resolve, can be resolved, all forms of jumping, bouncing, or hopping have been outlawed. Uh, the offense is punishable by death. <laughs> <laughs> Nike was the first to respond by announcing a new form of footwear called pillow shoes. <laughs> we here at News Channel 69 want to commend Nike for their ingenuity. <laughs> Indeed you are, JW. Well, that's it for the news now. Stay tuned for America's top game show. How stretched is the hooker's vagina?